بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومولاه. The mansis I'm going to be giving at the, the definition, which is the proper one that would include everything that you need to know about the menses. So the menstruation is, or the menses, is a dark, thick, smelly, discharged blood. So it is dark, thick, smelly, discharged blood during women's state of health, so during her health, when she reaches her puberty. It is not due to disease, nor giving birth, or breaking the hymen. I repeat the definition. Menstruation is a dark, thick, smelly, discharged blood during women's state of health, when she reaches her puberty, not due to disease, giving birth, or breaking the hymen. This blood comes regularly at a certain time every month and keeps flowing for a certain period. No specific age at which menstruation stops. That's the complete definition. No specific age at which the menstruation stops. So we're going to be putting out points to do to it to extract from this definition so this definition implicates the menstruation has the following so you're going to be putting points now and you're going to be putting a lot of points from that definition number one it has a dark color also it can be one of the following colors red which is original color yellow like pos, muddy, intermediate color between black and white. All of these colors is from the dark colors. So dark color it could, it could be one of the following colors, also could be one of the following colors, which is a red, dark red, that's the original color, or yellow, or muddy. Number two, it's thick, so it's not normal blood, thick. Number three, it's smelly, so the normal blood has got a different smell from this one. Number four, it begins when the woman reaches her puberty. And there is no specific age for puberty. Normally, it is between 9 and 15. The, the girl can reach you know, puberty when she's 9 years old. And 15 is the maximum. 15 here, we're talking about lunar system. And that, means, that means when she completes 15 years old, lunar system, that is 15 and a half, Solar system, she is reached her puberty. Whether she had seen the mens, uh, the uh, she had reached, whether she had seen the menses, or whether she had the wet dream, or she didn't have the wet dream, or didn't she have the pubic care, she had reached her puberty. Number five, it is discharged during the women's state of health. During the health, so it is not due to disease, giving birth, or breaking the hymen. So it is discharged during women's state of health. Yes, she gets pain and headaches and all of that before this, but we're talking about it's not because she's ill, she's discharging. Number six, it comes regularly every month at a certain time. This certain time differs from one woman to another. Some of the women it comes at the beginning, some of the women at the first day, third day of the month, some of the women comes at the, 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 the beginning, the first quarter of the month, and the half of the month, at the end of the month. Okay, differs. And number seven, normally the blood keeps flowing. Normally, the blood keeps flowing until the end of the menstruation. This is normally. We're going to talk about abnormal cases later on, where some of the women experience like drops of blood stop and then drops of blood. Okay, so normally, the blood keeps flowing until the end of menstruation period. Number eight. Length of menstruation period, how long, varies from one woman to another. No proof whatsoever that there is something that will state the maximum or the minimum. That is the length of the time for menses. There is no such thing. So it could be 
two days, three days, four days, five days, six days, seven days, eight days, nine days. There's 15 days, 16 days, 17 days. There's no specific time. Well, the Ahnaf, for example, will give you 15 days maximum. We don't give you no maximum, no. But there is something called predominant customary period. I'm going to refer to that word, predominant customary period. And that is six or seven days. That means most of the women are the six or seven days. Most of them. But there are more than that. A woman more than that. And a woman less than that. So the predominant customary period is six or seven days. The ninth point. No specific age at which women stops menstruation. Normally it is between 45 and 50. Normally. Between 45 and 50, the women stop menstruating, stop producing menses. Number 10, it does not take place while the woman is pregnant. So any woman who is experiencing abnormal circumstances where there is period coming from her, even it's got the smelly and all of that, even it comes during the time of her period, it is not period. Because the women, when they are pregnant, they cannot produce, okay, eggs to make what? Period. Do you understand that? So it's not period. It does not, that's number 11, yes? Does not normally take place while the woman is breastfeeding. And I said normally, but it might come once. When she's pregnant, no menses. But when she's breastfeeding, normally it does not take place. But it might take place. And that is why the person who is having medical relation with his wife and he doesn't want, for example, to have a baby because you've got a baby very close by, so leave about three, four months. While she's breastfeeding, normally it's a case safe because she does not menstruate. Finally, point number 12. <coughs> Consensus upon the impurity of the menstruation. There is no difference among the scholars that the menstrual blood is what? Impure. Whereas the normal blood of a human being, it is controversial. The correct opinion is it pure or impure? Huh? Yellow. We want to ask now the youngest child we have here, and that is Tabmi. Yes? Can you tell us, please? Your blood that comes out, is it pure or impure? Tell everybody. Pure. Pure. Look at that. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. This guy is answering a question. I bet you all people that don't answer. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. He said pure. Okay, very good. Okay, we're going to put now signs by which the woman determine if she's on her menses. All of this is not your book. I'm sorry about that because the book is just concise, means like little things. So the signs by which the woman can determine if she is on her menses. <coughs> Number two, one, firstly, time, the date in which it regularly comes. Let's say it's her first time. She hasn't been menstruating before. So in the time, it's not going to be irrelevant here, is it? Because there's no time, it's first time for her. Number two sign is the blood's characteristics. What do we say about the blood characteristics? Dark, smelly, thick. She'll know by that. Now, she's got this blood coming out. It's the first time for her. Okay, so... Now, by which she determines that she's hormone says that um, how long this guy is going to be strong? The blood is running, not in the brain. So, is she on her menses or not? It's the first time for her, then she will go to consideration of predominant customary period, six to seven days. Now, we're going to go to the signs by which she could determine that she hasn't, she's got the end of her menstruation. So, this is that she's on her menses. Now, the signs by which she can determine the end of her menses. One, <coughs> the discharge of the white secretion. Women, some of them, they will produce at the end of the menstruation, after the color fades, from dark into yellow into muddy, and then it goes on to white. She will produce white secretion. So that will indicate that her menses stopped. Number two, seeing the white cotton. She will put white cotton into a private part and they will come white. That means blood stopped flowing. That's the second sign. Some of the women, they don't have the white secretion. They will have the stoppage of the blood. 
So she would put the cotton, there's no blood there coming out, tissue, and then she, the, the process stopped. Number three, the change in the characteristics of the blood, that would give an idea, it's a sign. Number four, the time in which she regularly finishes. Like she finishes after six, seven, eight days, you will know. Number five, consideration of the predominant customary period. I'm giving you all of these signs in case they need one of them. Let's go now to the abnormal cases of urine menstruation. What are the abnormal that can take place for the women and then she's in now in, in confusion? Is she in her menses? Her menses stop? Well, so, number one. If yellow or muddy blood comes out during the days of menses, then she's considered part of the menses. But if it is white, sorry, yellow or muddy comes outside the period of the menses, then this is not menses and she's clean. Now, does that white, yellow or muddy breaks the wudu? Controversial. We don't have a proof that he breaks the wudu. So if you are discharging yellow or muddy outside the period time, so it, you consider it to be nothing and it does not break the wudu. Even though that some of the shiur, like Sheikh al says breaks the wudu, but we don't have a proof. Uh, but if it's during the time of the menses, then it's considered from the menses. Number two point. Sometimes delays in the discharge of menses blood might take place. So the woman <coughs> should disregard any pain that might accompany such delay and only consider herself on menses or her menses when she sees the actual flow of blood. Some of the women, and most of them, they will experience like headache, dizzy, like uh, loss, loss of power. Uh, but she, and because the time of the period, she knows the time of the period has almost started, she cannot be on her message until she's what? She sees the flowing of the blood. Otherwise, she is not on her message. Third abnormal circumstances is the length of time of the menstruation period may vary in some cases. So in such case, the woman should watch for the end of the blood discharge, always. So if she experiences six, six, six days, this time is about eight days. Because she could see the color fading, but it was extra two days, so she would consider that. If, in case, that's case number four, the blood being discharged as drops and stopping, drops, and so this happens a lot. So it is dropping, drops, and the following day stops. Following day drops, and then the following day is stopping. And the woman, she should look for the signs that determine whether she's on her menses or not. Like what, for example, khadr? She would look, is these drops during the days of what? Emergencies or not? That's how she looks for it. Also, are they thick, you know, smelly and all of that, dark? Okay. So if they are outside the period of time and they're not the same in the characteristics, then she's not on emergencies. If it's the first time, for the girl to have her menses, she should look always for the blood characteristics. Right, I've got a one case now, a girl, she's the first time, but she's experiencing blood, and the blood is not stopping for the whole month. What should she do? Yeah, put your finger on. The blood is not stopping. She's having blood from the, yes. If it's got the signs, then she's on a period. First one, sign. Look at the sign. So if there is, for example, like there's a thick and going fading color, okay. But the blood's still gushing, and how could she determine the end of it? If it's uh, in the customary time, uh, then uh, it's outside of customary time, then she will... But she hasn't got customary the first time for her. According uh, to normal... The, yeah, then just look for the blood. Look for the... Oh, then just go by the discharge stopping. But there's no stopping. The whole month is held on blood. What you should do? But usually women stop at, no, she should stop. So the predominant customary period. So you will consider herself on her menses for seven days. 
Okay, for seven days. And whatever blood after that is what? Whatever blood after that is what? Outside of the it's not mentioned. Which is called plumpy. It's the hard. We're going to come to it. Even if it has the characteristics of the... She cannot have the characteristics of the blood mm -hmm. for a long, long time. Okay. Because she will have... Because it's always... When the woman she's got running blood, it's always, always mm -hmm. the same color. But if she can distinguish the beginning of it, then if she can't, then she had to consider one of this period, this is her period. Because it's the first time for her, there is no yeah, yeah. something for her to measure on. Yeah. No. I've finished now the menses. I'm going to go to the post childbirth bleeding or the postnatal nifas. Okay, sisters, I could hear somebody talking. This topic is for you actually, it's not for the brothers. So you might be as well paying attention to someone. Tabam. Postpartum bleeding is the bleeding that occurs due to giving birth. Its maximum length is 40 days. Um Salama anha said, During the lifetime of the Prophet the postpartum bleeding would wait for 40 days. If the blood stops flowing before 40 days, the woman should make ghusl and purify herself. If it continues beyond 40 days, she should make ghusl for the completion of 40 days and be considered pure. Right. Let's now give the proper definition of the postnatal. So this is the blood which occurs after the birth of a child. Regardless of the child survived the birth or did not. Okay. This blood occurs after the birth of a child. Regardless of the child survived the birth or not. This definition implicates the following. Number one, this bleeding normally begins straight after or with birth, but it may start two or three days before birth, as long as it is carries on bleeding until after birth. So this blood comes just before two days or one day before the birth and continues and links with the blood after birth, then it's what? Considered to be part of her postnatal. So she's not allowed to pray, she's not allowed to. Okay. Number two. And by the way, this is a very rare case. Usually it is the blood comes out after the birth. Number two, if a miscarriage takes place, because the definition says whether the child is alive or what? Or dead. So if the miscarriage takes place, then the bleeding is considered what? Post natal. So the, 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 there's a miscarriage. Number three, the bleeding has no minimum duration. So you could, she could have menses only for two days, one day. Or just after the birth, there's a bit of blood and it stopped, which is very rare cases. So there is no minimum duration. It could stop straight away after birth. Number four, maximum duration. So if the blood has to keep going, the maximum duration for it is 40 days. Number five, the color of the blood is almost the same as the menses. Thick, smelly, dark, and all that. Number six, the sign for which the woman knows the end of her bleeding is for the blood to stop. That's it. The blood will stop. That means it stopped. Number five, number seven, consensus upon the impurity of this blood. There is no difference among the scholars. This is impure, just like the menses. Right, now we're going to talk about abnormal cases during postnatal blood bleeding. There's only three cases. The abnormal cases is number one, the blood stopped flowing within the 40 days and then started flowing again before the 40 days period has elapsed. Again, this woman, she got given birth. Her blood started on the 10th day, the blood stopped. She started doing her fasts and prayers. And on the 20th day, I mean, so 10 days period, when she had prayed and made fast, on the 20th day, uh, after 10 days, the blood back again. So, what does that mean? Means that she was on her what? On her postnatal. So, whatever she had done from that ibad is not what? Is invalid. So all the fast was invalid because the blood, even though stopped 
early, but it continued before the 40 days elapsed. So that means she had abnormal cases where there's stoppage of the blood, the, she was on her menses. So if she, for example, stopped her blood second day, and she resumed the ibadah, and on the 39th day, she got the blood, then all of those days gonna be what? Canceled, in validation. Of course, the salah, she doesn't really need, you know, she's not gonna be compensated for the salah, but she did fast, obligatory fast, those days will not be counted. She'll be rewarded for her eagerness to do the ibadah, but she's not gonna be accepted for the invalid, because invalid days. Now, the other case, the other, the other way around now. If the blood stopped flowing within the 40 days, then started flowing again after the 40 days, then this period during which the blood has stopped is not considered as part of the post -making. Okay? I've said blood stopped the same the 10th day, and then came back on the 41st day, then no problem. It's, uh, she was clean because it came after the 40, 40 days mark. Right. Third normal case, abnormal case. That is, if the blood kept flowing for more than 40 days, the blood gushing, gushing for 40 days, then she should discharge, so disregard this blood, which is after the 40 days, commence on her prayers. But there is one case where she continues after the 40 days. Anybody would like to tell me that? The blood gushed more than 40 days. We said she considered herself, she should disregard that blood, except in one case, she should not disregard that blood after the 40 days. The menses again. Very good. If it coincides with the menses date. So if her 40 days stops, and she normally has, as it stops at the beginning of the month, and she normally has her period at the beginning of the month, and the blood kept running, so she should add to that 40 days her customary period, which is six to seven days. Okay? <coughs> now we're coming, what is the book says, what is forbidden for the person on menses or postnatal should not do, it's not impermissible to do. Now, forbidden acts. What is, what is forbidden for the menstruating and postpartum bleeding woman? All the actions discussed earlier prohibited for the one who is not in a state of evolution are also prohibited for menstruating and postpartum bleeding women. No, we don't agree with that. We're going to should add that except, which is on the, on the one called Janaba, except for touching the Qur'an if she needs. Do you understand that? The menses is different from the Janaba. The Janaba, you can get rid of it by what? Having Qusr. But the message she come on. And if the woman she got her menses for 15 days and she's half of Quran, she needs to have the Quran to memorize. So the uh, permissibility for her to touch the Quran is more in this case of what? Of somebody who's under in the Janan. Okay? But go ahead. However, the following are additionally prohibited. Number one, fasting. She must make up the fast after she becomes pure. Mu'adh said, I asked Aisha, why does the menstruating woman make up her fast but not her prayers? She replied, we experience these things during the time of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and he ordered us to make up our fasts and he did not order us to make up our prayers. Number two. Okay, so fasting, you have to compensate for it, if it's for one or one. So the woman, she did not fast during the days of Ramadan because of her menses, then she should, what? Make up for them. But if she was experiencing postnatal blood, she must not fast, but she has another option. Can you tell me that? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very well. Because she would be normally what? Breast? Yeah. Feeding. So if she had postnatal, she cannot fast. But she's breastfeeding. Because of that, she has another option of not making up for those days, but to pay the fee, which is feeding a poor person for every day she breaks her fast. Very good. Number two. Number two, 
sexual intercourse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْمَحِيضِ قُلْ هُوَ أَذَى فَاعْتَزِلُ النِّسَاءَ فِي الْمَحِيضِ وَلَا تَقَرَّبُوهُنَّ وَلَا تَقَرَّبُوهُنَّ وَلَا تَقَرَّبُوهُنَّ حَتَّى يَطَهَّرُنَّ يَطْهُرُنَّ يَطْهُرُنَّ فَإِذَا تَطَهَّرُنَّ فَآتُوهُنَّ فَأْتُوهُنَّ مِنْ حَيْثُ أَمَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ they ask you concerning menstruation. Say, this is an other, a harmful thing for a husband to have a sexual intercourse with his wife while she is having her menses. Therefore, keep away from women during menses and go not unto them till they have purified from menses and have taken a bath. And when they have purified themselves, then go in unto them as Allah has ordained for you. Okay, so we got intercourse is not allowed for the women who are menses, and you're not supposed to have intercourse until not just the menses stops until she what? Yatatahum, meaning usul. After the usul, you're allowed, not before the usul. So, to summarize this, and the Prophet said, also, also, Prophet said, do everything. Concerning this issue, the Prophet said, you may do everything with the menstruating woman except for sexual intercourse. Right, I'm going to summarize on that because he said whatever is forbidden upon the person who is sexually defined is permissible for her. So I'm going to do these points. So number one is prayer, isn't it? Because it's impermissible for the woman to Prayer. She does not make up for missed prayers, but this is also forbidden during Janab. Number two, Tawaf. That's forbidden upon the person who is impure, also upon her menses. Tawaf. Uh, and with the tawaf we add sa'i always because sa'i Allah call it فَلْيَطَوَّ فَلِيمَا he call it tawaf sa'i to the number one the fast thing we said as he says yet which is uh, you know she has to make up for the fast for those days except she's breastfeeding uh, even though she's breastfeeding postnatal we said that she has a choice of pain failure Number five, we said, which is that intercourse, everything is allowed except for sexual intercourse. I say everything is allowed. It's not a good leisure person, do whatever you like, as long as you don't make it intercourse. We got another point here as well. Number six, divorce. Man may not divorce his wife on her, she's her menses. But he's allowed. Is allowed to do it when having her postnatal after giving the birth. So he's allowed to divorce while she's pregnant, he's allowed to divorce her while she is in her postnatal, but not on her menses. Why? Because he's going to mess up her period. We don't know if she's pregnant or she's not pregnant. So if he divorced her during her menstruation time, we call it talaq bidri, innovation talaq. Talaq will be counted, but he has to bring her back, take her on custody back. And hold her until she gets the whole month not to touch her. The following menses, after she finishes, then he's got the choice not to divorce her again or to keep her with her. I'm going to repeat what I said. Person who divorces his wife during her menses. We call it talak what? Bidri. Talak bidri, controversial among the scholars, it can or not, but it is counted because the case of Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu anhu, when she had. Divorced his wife when she was in her menses. The Prophet said, Return her back. So he turned her and he said, It counted upon me as one balqa. So he turned her back, so he had to return her back. Now, after that, if he wants to divorce her again, he has to wait. So her menses finishes and then she will have a clean period for 25, 24 days. Then she has the menses again, and after the menses that finishes, then he's allowed to walk. To make Allah, because you have to make sure he did not touch her intercourse wise within that period. So we make sure that her belly, her tummy has got no baby. Make sure 100%. It has to be done, done this way. It is not to be done through, for example, let's go on, you know, CDNA and all of that. No, it has to be done that way. So for the menses, no balak. And for the menstruate, for the post people, there is a lot of no problem. Okay. Go for it.
the following topic. The ruling concerning one's most sexual intercourse with a menstruating woman. And now he wrote in his commentary, Sahih Muslim, if a Muslim believes it is permissible to have sexual intercourse with a menstruating woman, he becomes a disbelieving apostate. I mean, if the person says, I don't care what the Prophet said, I think it's halal to intercourse with a wife when she's on a menses, then he is a kafir apostate. Now, if he commits such an act, while believing not while not believing it is permissible, but out of forgetfulness, ignorant that she that she was having her menses, ignorant that that it is forbidden or being coerced to do so, then there is no sin or expiation due from him. So if this person forgot or he was ignorant, he doesn't know it's haram, she doesn't know it's haram, uh, or this woman she was compelled, she knows it's haram, but her husband forced her. She's not gonna be sinned, he's gonna be sinned. But if, but if he did so intentionally, knowing that she was menstruating, knowing that is forbidden and out of choice, then he has committed a major sin. Not just he, she as well. He and she committed a sin, a major one. <clears throat> As Shafi'i explicitly stated that it is a major sin. It is a because most... the Prophet said about nothing, and an a bari, about nothing with a person who does that. Now. It is a must that he repent. There are two opinions as to whether he must expiate for that act. The stronger opinion <coughs> is the expiation is obligatory. No, this one. You're reading. Yeah. Go on. The stronger opinion is that the expiation is obligatory. This is based on the hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas from the Prophet ﷺ. He said concerning a man who had sexual relations with his menstruating wife used to give a dinar or half a dinar in charity. We say that the takhir, gone, rigid. Go ahead. The option stated in the hadith is related to whether the act occurred in the first days of the menses or in the later days. It is narrated that Ibn Abbas said if he had relations with her at the beginning of the days of bleeding, then he is to give a dinar. If it were towards the end of the days of bleeding, he gives half a dinar. Well, uh, this is the saying of Abdullah ibn Abbas, but also there is a shihad from the scholars. It depends upon the financial situation of the person who committed that sin. If he's rich, he will pay full dinar. If he's poor, he will pay half a dinar in sadaqa, because he had approached her uh, uh, in, in a time where he's not supposed to do so. If he's forgotten, no kafar on him, no expiation. Is the person who what intention he had done that? And he's sinful as well, and he has to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, go ahead. It's the harbour, metro radio, or uterine hemorrhaging. Okay, before we do this, the harbour. We need to know that the following acts are permissible during menses and postnatal. So we have just said what is it, not to, which is impermissible. We need to know what's permissible for them as well. Entering and staying in the masjid. That's a very important point. So they are allowed to enter the masjid, whether they are menstruating or postnatal. Any sister pushes a sister out of the masjid because she's not praying, tell her, where is your proof? Just ask her, where is your proof? As the ayah, which is in the Nisa, verse 43, it nothing to do for, okay, it's nothing to do, uh, 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 to do with this issue at all. The one we just mentioned just now as well. Um, so it's nothing to do with this. We say that it is allowed to, the only proof they might bring for the Sheikh Ibn Rafi means that it's at the time of the Prophet ﷺ during the Eid, Prophet of Allah, he said, uh, sorry, Ma'atish, he said that the Prophet of Allah commanded us to bring along with us uh, to the Eid all these women who are virgin, screened, never seen the light before, uh, a free or slave, to bring them all children and menstruating women. And then it says in the hadith, let the menstruating women avoid the musalla. From that he says, the musalla is, uh, uh, avoid musalla, that means a masjid. Well, the musalla here means a salah, because you know that he prayed pray where? Outside. Outside. And there is no such thing, limits for musalla, because the musalla is according to where the people are going to be big or small. 
in the sermon, so you could be a, you know, part of the playing ground, part of that area when we prayed our Eid prayer at that time, part of it all. It depends on how many people turn up. So we're going to tell it, oh, push away, because there are people, more people, push away, push away. There's not, no, not, no such thing. So we say that it is, uh, this hadith is going to talk, talk about the entering of the masjid. So no problem for her to enter the masjid when she's in her menses. It's better, of course, to be pure all the time. She's allowed also to make the prostration of tilaw or gratitude. Because they're not salah. Prostration of tilaw is not salah. Gratitude is not salah. She's allowed to recite the Quran, touch the Quran if she needs to do so. She's allowed to do anything the pilgrim does from saying the Talbiyah and going to Arafah, Muzdalifah, except for what? Prayer and Tawaf. On the good side. Okay, now, now before we go to the istihada, I'm going to write down a topic useful points during menstruation or post childbirth bleeding. Very useful points. Write them down, and then I'm going to, be, I'm going to summarize 17 points. Useful points during menstruation or post childbirth baby. You will know how important these points want to start with number one. Number one, women are obligated to inform their husband about the start and the end of their menstruation. Women are obligated. They must tell their husband about the start and the end of their menstruation so that he cannot approach them or if you want to divorce isn't divorce her. Because when she has medicine, she's got no child. Number two, no intercourse is allowed until she performs ghusl after the blood stops. And number three, I'm going to shrink these points a bit. If the child was born through a cesarean, and there was discharge of blood, but not from the vagina, then she is not on her menses, on her postnatal. Do you understand that? So, if the baby came out with cesarean and there was no blood coming out from the vagina, then there is no postnatal blood. Tell me which point I know. Four? Yes. Okay. Four. The women, when they do the ghusl after menses or postnatal, they have to undo their plaited hair. Not in the case of Janami. Remember that? Also, we say the point number five recommended for the women in her whistle to take smeared cotton with musk. So cotton smeared with musk, perfume wipes the trace of the blood. Did we talk about the washing of the menses from the clothes and all of that before? Yes, we did. Okay, we'll just add that point as well. Number six, wash the menstruation from the clothes or the postnatal blood. Use water, detergent, rub, scrub, and then sprinkle the whole underwear or garment. If there's any trace of blood after that, there's no problem. So put it in the washing machine, it will be okay. <laughs> Everything will be done. Now, it is permissible for women to take, take medicine in order to delay her menses for the sake of performing Hajj or Umrah. You say it is permissible. It is permissible. <coughs> as long as they don't have serious side effects, you know. But is it advisable? It's, it's a lever to the person to, be, to determine. Okay, there was a, 
this Umrah of ours, when we came, there was a woman, she was almost going to have her menses as soon as we landed in Mecca. And if she'd had her menses, she will not be performing the Umrah because the amount of days going to stay in Mecca is four, five days. So, uh, <clears throat> after she was asking me the question when I did the seminars, and she's persisting to ask the question, then I, I said, there's a problem here. And then I, uh, I, I said to her, okay, is anybody's sister would uh, have a medicine? Yes, I've got a medicine. And this medicine will stop that bleeding from the beginning. She took it tonight and that's it. Alhamdulillah, she took it and she did not put us in trouble for having her menses. Because she has to stay and because she has to stay in still. A woman on her menses she's allowed to wash the head of her husband. A man, he could put himself, his head into the lap of his wife when she's having her menses and read Quran, you know that? No problem. It's a very strong point, he says. Prophet was reading Quran while his head was on the lap of Aisha and she was what? On her menses. Do you know how good is this point? This normally asks, they tell us for example, when you have your Qur'an being recited into your car, most of the speakers, they are on feet level. Do you understand that? That gives you an answer. It's allowed. You know that when the Qur'an comes out, the speakers at the feet level, isn't it? Because the question comes, you know, is it halal? Because it's coming from the feet. Shall I take the speakers and put them up? You can't do that, of course. Right? So it's not meant for you to go and you put your foot onto the Qur'an. Yes. It's coming from there. Prophet of Allah, he was reciting Qur'an, his level was onto the private part of his wife where she had what? Menses. Right. No problem, by the way, to drink and eat with a woman should have a menses. You know why I'm saying this? The Jews, they... You know, they uh, isolate her. They, they, they say that she's got shaitan, beast in her. She's a beast, basically, they treat her. So she has to be isolated, not to eat, not to drink with the people. SubhanAllah. <laughs> Recommended for the women on their menses to witness the Eid, festivals, and listen to the khutbah. Right, now we're coming to the very important points. Point number one, 11. Ten. Ten. I'm skipping point, as I'm just saying which point. <laughs> if the menses or the postnatal blood started after the prayer time has commenced and she did not pray that particular prayer, she must perform it once finishing her menstruation. So if she had the lohar started and then the menses started after lohar, and when she gets cleansed, she has to start with the what? With that bubble. She hasn't prayed it. If the menses stopped before Maghrib, listen. If the menses stopped before Maghrib, so her menses stopped before the start of the Maghrib, then she must perform Bukhur and Asr. Of that day because the Dhuhr and Asr becomes one prayer. If it stopped before midnight, just do what? Maghrib mission. Correct. So if it stopped before midnight, because midnight, up to midnight, the Isha and Maghrib becomes one time. So if it stopped after midnight, there's nothing on that. She doesn't do anything. Fasting is invalid once a woman has menses, even if it took place just seconds before sunset. Still is invalid. If the menses stop before Fajr, she may fast. Even if she did not make ghusl. So her menses stop just before Fajr. The ghusl is only for intercourse. 
So she could be having herself not having ghusl, but she could fast that day. As long as, but if the blood stayed, stayed and started until, stayed until after Fajr, even one second, two seconds, and then she cannot fast that particular day. Finally, please, the sisters should not break their fast in Ramadan in front of children because of their menses. Because they're the children, they don't know. You're asking them to fast and you're not fasting. You cannot interpret that. Don't say to you, this mom of ours is playing around. But it has to do something and she's behind our back, she's still eating. The child doesn't understand that she cannot fast. Istihada, insha'Allah, is the final thing. And by which we finish. Yeah. Let's make a stihawa. Talk. Stihawa, a condition where the woman has a continual birth rate. Specifically, this refers to bleeding at times other than the menses or postpartum bleeding, or the bleeding can it is or the bleeding is connected to those times but continues beyond them. If it is the first case where the bleeding occurs other than at the time of menses or postpartum bleeding, the case is clear. If it is the latter case, then if the woman has a regular pattern for the length of her menses, then anything which is beyond that norm would be considered stihawa. The Prophet said to Umm Khadiba, abstain from the prayer, the time that your menses used to keep you from the prayer and then wash and pray. The woman, the woman may also recognize her case by distinguishing the characteristics of the blood flow. In the case of menstruation, the blood is dark and recognizable. In Istihaba, it will be different. Thus, the Prophet said to Fatima bin Abi Hubaysh, if it were the blood of the menses which is dark and known, then refrain from the prayers. If it were the other blood, then make ablution, for it is only a vein. Okay, just to say black, dark, and known, and known. Actually, as well, uh, it's actually, yeah, it's not just known, it's meaning as well smelly. Because the wording is well here, it could be known, ma'ruf, or ya'rif, ya'rif means smells. Okay. If the yes, for long the woman is uh, If a girl with this condition reaches puberty and cannot distinguish her regular menses or the different nature of the blood, then she should follow what is customary, what is the customary pattern for her for the, for the woman. The Prophet ﷺ said to Himna bintu Jash. Himna bintu Jash. That is just a strike from the strikes of Satan. So this is a strike from it's a, ver, a vein, and it bursts and it gives the blood. It's a strike from the strikes of the shaitan. So he could really make the woman confused if she's her menses, not her menses. Nah. In order to try to cause you harm and confusion. Therefore, have your menses for six or seven days by Allah's knowledge. Then make also, after you have purified and cleaned yourself, pray for 24 nights and 23 days and fast as well during that time. That means for leave how many? Six or seven days. Customary leave, you remember? No. That will be sufficient for you. Do that every month, just like the woman menstruate and just like they purify themselves based on the timing of their periods of menses and purity. Go on, final thing. Rulings for istihaba. The, matter, the matters that are forbidden for the menstruating woman are not forbidden for the woman with istihawa. However, she must perform ablution for every prayer, as the Prophet ﷺ told Fatima bint Abu Qudaysh, uh, make ablution for every prayer. As discussed earlier, in addition, it is also recommended for her to make also Maybe every prayer. After every prayer, every, every prayer time, not the prayer as in every single prayer. For example, Dhar Shafin Qudu, and the Sunnah of Dhar Shafin Qudu, and the second Sunnah of Dhar Shafin Qudu. No, no. Makes every prayer, in every prayer time. So, Dhar to Asr, one wudu. When Asr starts, she has to make another wudu. When Maghrib starts, she has to make another wudu. But she could do what we call it the so-called combination, but it's not combination. 
you call it virtual combination. Huh? Not the actual combination, which is that she would delay her dhuhr to the end of the time of the dhuhr and perform the dhuhr in its time, at the end of it, and bring Asr at the beginning of its time, but pray to Asr at its time and have one wudu for both of them. Same thing with Maghrib and Rishi, we'd have one wudu for both of them. Delay the Maghrib to the end of its time and pray the Maghrib on its time and bring Isha at the beginning of the time and pray in its time and both of them will one wudu. So, prolonged period is the flow of blood outside the regular time. That's what it is. This implicates the following five points we have. Number one, it is irregular and may come at any time. Point number two, can take place straight after or before menstruation or postnatal. Before or after. Because it's irregular. And number three, it has no time limit or specific duration. Number four, it is pure. Listen to me, it is pure. It's not like the menses. This blood is pure. Therefore, the rules of menstruation do not apply in this case. Number five, it is a strike of shaitan. Now, the cases for prolonged period is two cases. Case number one, the flow of the menses or the postnatal is longer than usual. That's the first case. In this case, you should consider her customary period. And what remains is considered prolonged. Sihaba. Second case, the woman cannot determine if she is experiencing menses or prolonged. Which one? Is it Sihaba or Hayy? Why? Because she forgot what's her first time. She forgot when it was menses. What's her first time for her menses? In such a case, she should look at the characteristics of the blood. Otherwise, she should consider the predominant customary period, six or seven days. <coughs> now coming to the last topic, ruling of a woman experiencing this prolonged period. Ruling. Number one, she's considered as those who are pure. So she could embark upon all her types of worship, prayer, fasting, etikaf. She may also come to the masjid and as long as she keeps her blood in check. No problem about that. Just like a normal woman. But she keeps her shelf in check regarding the blood. She should take precautions by cleaning her vagina before performing wudu. Then she should wear something which, you know, soaks up the blood. And to do as much as you can to keep the blood in check. Three, <coughs> she must do wudu for each prayer time. As we have explained. Listen up to the point number 40. The point, she may not perform wudu before prayer time commences. She cannot make wudu for dhuhr before the dhuhr starts. Do you understand me? It has to start and she makes wudu. She made the wudu before the dhuhr starts, her wudu is invalid. It will not be considered. So once the dhuhr starts, then she makes the wudu. And that's very important to know this because of the women go to Hajj and Umrah, you know, it's very hard for them to go to make wudu. So they start making wudu work very early. Now that wudu, if she don't have a prolonged period, it will not work. Just do it after the wudu commences, or after the asr commences, or after the maghrib commences, after the prayer time. <coughs> Why? Because this purity is a necessity, and therefore she may not do it before the necessity is due. That's what it is. Number five. It is not compulsory upon her to do also to do the prayer. Not compulsory. Compulsory also only when she finishes her menses or postnatal. Number six. It is recommended for her to do also for each prayer, not just wudu. Recommended to what? Also. Because the hadith, the, the hadith which Himna bin Tujash 
it, is, it has a continuation which the author did not bring. Prophet said, if you are capable of making the ghusl, if you're strong enough, then do the ghusl. This also can do it for each prayer or each combination. You remember the combination we said? Delay the Dhuhr, bring the Asr forward. Delay the Maghrib, bring the Isha forward. Finally, she may have marital relation while she is experiencing the prolonged flow of blood. No problem. Mental intercourse. I am finished by this, alhamdulillah. I am now expecting you to participate. Assistant in questions, please.